Wo ha August neich blei ne juish, but hulle lisa eitkin a vikli squash. For an wrong girl eich ge sonne spores it jar such er a hoost. I absolutely loved the the close confinement in the squash court of just you and somebody else and battling it out. Um it was kind of a lot of um a, a big mental process as well in terms of where you placed the ball a bit like chess combined with sport and I absolutely loved that. Um and I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. I went and played my first junior tournament at the age of 10 up in Aberdeen. Um and it went from there. I think there was four of us in the in the tournament and I managed to win and it felt like I'd won Wimbledon or something. I I honestly was so chuffed and yeah, it went from there. So I kept going to lessons and I was fortunately spotted by one of the best coaches in Scotland at the time and his son was the world number 1 Peter Nickel and I was making the journey from Montrose up to West Hill um once a week and that became five times a week very quickly and I couldn't really shake that shake the bug and the love that I had for the game I just couldn't say bye to squash and um yeah fortunately I'm where I am today and I'm still loving the game probably even more now than I am as a 9 year old at Savai Farpish in Malaysia, her Lisa fever dengue. Where in Tahar to show na behe, your fall of unhoosh or some tree bliana. Yeah, I got bitten by a mosquito, contracted dengue fever, and that week or so after that, I don't really remember too much. I was in hospital, um, all sorts of symptoms from hallucination, uh, fever, vomiting, all, all of that things. But that that kind of it's a blur. Um I don't remember too much about about it because of how sick I was, but it didn't last too long, only maybe a week to 10 days. Mm-hmm. But the the after effect of that, it triggered a, an autoimmune disease in my body. Um, and I was left with kind of very active autoimmune disease, which uh, the symptoms kind of portrayed as chronic fatigue um, in, a, in quite a severe way. So that then meant that there was two years of my life where I'd moved back home with my parents, sold my car, sold my flat, um, was pretty debilitated and, and, and lived most of that two years in my bed with a lot of help from my parents, I guess, financially and emotionally and physically. I was very lucky to be to have them there to do that. So naturally I came off the tour, lost my ranking, was no longer Lisa Aiken's squash player. And yeah, tough time, absolutely tough time. But at the same time, it gave me a chance to stop, come out of this athlete bubble life where you're completely consumed um, and it's very easy to, to be consumed by the sport and reset. So, yeah, I, I think about three years after I contracted the dengue fever, I returned to tour. I chose to go back to Malaysia for my very first tournament because I developed quite a lot of anxiety around traveling and being away from home doing things myself I was scared that I would get bitten by another mosquito which we don't really have many of them in Scotland but for some reason I thought we did <laughs> and um like my first tournament back in Malaysia because if I could do that I could go anywhere um and it was great I got to the semi-final I had a great time I had such a new level of appreciation for the sport itself and having a, a really fit and healthy body that allowed me to go and do this in a country for a living was just, you know, that level of gratitude um, takes you takes you so far. It's incredible, the power of it. And I had that in abundance. Um, so it made for a really great, great few years on tour that followed that. When Lisa rocked on the halibut, I can hear you get in Hawaii shake and in Birmingham and betray and blame it. I really shocked the triple jump and really noticed Chile's lip bone. I'd broken my hand six weeks out from the games, which was a little bit of alarm bells for the whole team and my doubles partners. Um, I'd also contracted E. coli and was having um, a lot of stomach issues in the build-up to that as well. So not the best preparation, not being able to hold a racket, get on court with my doubles partners. Um, having that blow of the of breaking the hand was, was a little bit crushing and I did a lot of work with my psychologist and visualisation because I couldn't actually hit balls. It was very important that I was still thinking about how to hit balls and how I wanted to play. And um, the power of that was was phenomenal. Um, and have, I'll be honest, I had an expectation that I was going to win a medal because I truly believed that that was possible. Um, that didn't pan out. I had to pull out of the singles event because I wasn't ready to play due to the hand. Um, and yeah, it just was 
unfortunately, probably a couple of weeks too early. That was just by far the, the biggest disappointment of my career so far. So third Commonwealth Games, third time coming away without a medal. I'll definitely be going back next time. Ha Lisa Moho, Google fame at Baroch Borinichen and Squash. Ayas Hayanochis, Gunni Hain, is Clicked in Alpenoch Ella, and Navrunak of Rosnoho. I mean, we've got four women in Scotland who, the top four women, are all unbelievable squash players, athletes, and humans who are very, very blessed. Like, our team finished fourth at the European Team Championships, and that's the first time since early 90s that that's been done. So, I think it shows the great depth within the sport in Scotland at the minute. Georgia Arley's on her way up in the rankings. Hopefully I am too. Alison Thompson, who's at number three, is coming back from an injury and she's been as high as 50-ish in the world. So it's great. We're in, a, we're in a great place. But beyond that, we still don't have the depth that we need to be challenging those, those top four spaces. And I think the more that myself, Georgia, Ali and Katrina can be out on the world tour competing all over the world, it just sends a message to the girls back home in Scotland and you know what social media is like as much as we can c- promote that um, across all platforms and I think it's only encouraging for them participation levels increase due to having these role models in place so I believe that it's very important the frustrating thing for me is I don't get back to Scotland as much as I would like to actually give back and be there in real life um, but that's certainly something that I'll look to do later on in my career. Halisa Nochis nach wie Treplachin Semiach in Tazenser I think um, get through this season relatively unscathed in terms of breaking bones and illnesses would be a, I would deem that as quite a success. But no, I think, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say I had the top 20 in the world in my sights in terms of rankings. I'm sitting at 28 right now, so I'm not too far away. And I obviously play these girls um, most weeks on the tour and I definitely know that I'm capable of doing that so um, we have the World Team Championships coming up in December in Cairo so I'll be going out there to represent Scotland it'll be nice to put that top back on um, after the Commonwealth Games and I'm looking forward to um, hopefully finishing as high as, as we can there with, with the, the girls um, but really I think it's been a while since I've worked my way through a tournament and picked up a title so if I can do that this season, then um, that would be brilliant.